Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one web platform that makes it easy to create your own outstanding website for your business or personal needs. But more about that later. If you've got a Steam Deck, you probably know a whole lot about it. But did you know that there are tons of hidden features that are just waiting to be discovered? That's what this video is all about. Here are 10 things you didn't know about your Steam Deck. You can change the intensity of the haptic feedback, but what is haptic feedback? You might know it as another name, rumble. But where other controllers have a rumble motor like this, the Steam Deck uses linear actuators closer to what the DualSense or the Switch Pro controllers have. To change the feel of the rumble on deck, go to settings, controller, calibration and advanced settings, and then select haptic settings. Here you can raise or lower the intensity of the rumble. You can also disable game rumble by unchecking this box. Now you're playing Steam Deck with all the feels. Stick drift is a real thing and dead zones are here to help. Go to settings, controller, controller and advanced settings, and then go to the joystick page. You can adjust the dead zones of each control stick. If you press Y on the screen, you'll be able to see the raw input data from each stick. Here you can see that my left stick drifts ever so slightly to the right. By adjusting this range slider, we can set our dead zone to compensate. But if you hate the idea of any joystick drift, you can actually upgrade your Steam Deck with a Hall Effects joystick module and replace it yourself. Let's talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace makes creating a beautiful, fresh, and modern website easy with Fluid Engine, their next generation web design system that makes unleashing your creativity easy. You can customize templates to your liking with their reimagined drag and drop technology on your desktop or even your mobile device. You can also use Squarespace to sell your custom merch. It's a great way to engage with your audience, scale your brand, and create a passive income stream. All you need to do is design your products and Squarespace can handle the production, inventory, and shipping for you. Now I use Squarespace for my business and one of the things that I love about it is the extension system. You can connect your store to vetted third-party tools, which will extend the functionality of your website and the sky's the limit here. As a designer by trade, I needed a simple way to present my custom designs that reflected my brand. Using Squarespace's tools, I was able to get the new merch store up and running in just a few hours. It was so easy to use Squarespace and I'm glad that I did. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Right now you can try Squarespace for free for 14 days and receive 10% off your first purchase. Make sure you head over to squarespace.com slash Gardner Bryant and use the offer code Gardner Bryant. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And now back to it. You probably knew that you can adjust the mapping of any button, stick, or trackpad on the Steam Deck using Steam input. But did you know that you can customize how everything behaves in desktop mode too? Yep. Just go to settings, controller, desktop layout, and hit edit. This gives you access to the same controller settings menu that you're used to when playing any other game. And there are even community layouts for desktop mode to choose from. I've changed my right stick to some commonly used shortcuts. Pushing left on the stick works like the back button, and if you hit up on the stick, it works like Alt-Tab. And speaking of, you can map hotkeys to any button, stick, trackpad, or even virtual menu. You already knew that, but did you know that you can map multiple commands to the same button press? For example, if you want to have Alt-Tab mapped to a single action on the controller, just find the button that you want to map to that command, then add the first key or action to it. Now, click the gear icon and hit Add Subcommand. Now, assign the second key or command. Boom, the key combo is mapped. You can add tons of subcommands too, but that's not all. You might have noticed that there are actually two options here, Add Subcommand and Add Extra Command. So what's the difference? Well, subcommands are triggered when the parent command is activated, but extra commands allow you to trigger one command on a normal press and a different command on a long press. So you can do something like mapping the interact key to a short press of the X button and the reload key to a long press of the X button. It's pretty handy. Did you know that there's a hidden settings menu on your Steam Deck? It's true. Go to settings, system, enable developer mode, and it will unlock the developer tab in the settings menu. This is awesome, and it's totally safe to do. It's especially useful if you're experiencing poor Wi-Fi performance on your 5G Wi-Fi network. Go to System, Developer, and then switch off the Enable Wi-Fi Power Management option. But one of the things that I appreciate most about being in developer mode is that the power menu has a new option, Restart Steam. This is exactly what it sounds like, it restarts Steam. I have found this quite handy on more than one occasion, especially if I was experiencing a glitch in game mode or with a plugin. Now, one of the most awesome parts of the Steam Deck is the virtual keyboard. You can bring up the keyboard at any time by holding Steam and pressing the X button. 
boom, there it is. But there's a not so well-known way to type super quickly on the deck. You can actually use each touchpad to control a cursor that lets you pick the key you want. Once your cursor is over the key you're looking for, you can press in on the trackpad and then you'll type that key into your input field. It takes a little bit of practice, but it's so much faster than using the analog stick or the D-pad to hunt and peck for letters. And I simply can't go without trackpad typing anymore. Plus, you have access to not only a full emoji keyboard, but also Steam emoticons built right in. It's pretty awesome. You probably know that your Steam library is not only limited to games. You can get a ton of different types of software through Steam. Stuff like Godot Game Engine, Aceprite, and other awesome stuff. But did you know that you can also buy music through Steam? Now, I own a ton of soundtracks for some of my favorite games. Titles like Undertale, Portal, and Half-Life Alex are just a few examples. Well, you can actually open up the quick access menu and select the soundtrack icon, and then hit Browse Soundtracks, pick some music to play, and then you can control the playback of your music through the quick access menu. Now, if only games knew Steam was playing music and they could mute their own music, that would be great. Multiplayer is at the heart of PC gaming, and that holds true for deck. Hit the quick access menu and go to the friends tab. Highlight a friend and then hit A. And then you can chat with them using the same Steam chat UI that you know and love on desktop. But if you hit the menu button instead, you can then select the find games to play together option. Then you'll see a list of games that you have in common with that friend. You can even start a remote play together session by launching any remote play together compatible title. And once the game has started, open up the quick access menu, select the remote play together tab and create a session. Choose add friend and then select somebody. And now you're ready to play. There are tons of built-in shortcuts and key combos that can save you time and headache. We've already talked about how you can bring up the virtual keyboard with Steam Plus X in a previous video. But there are others too. Like, did you know that you can take a screenshot by pressing Steam and hitting the right bumper at the same time? And it saves to the media section so you can upload it to the Steam Cloud. But you can also hold Steam and the left bumper at the same time to bring up a magnifying tool. Using the right trackpad while holding down these buttons will move the magnification and the cursor around the screen. This is great for games like Command & Conquer or Civilization. Did you know that hooking up controllers changes the button prompts in game mode? Put your controller into pairing mode and then go to settings Bluetooth. Scroll down to available to pair and you should see your controller appear. Tap on your controller and then Steam should automatically recognize the type of controller you've connected and it'll start showing you the appropriate button prompts. Bonus fact, if you connect a DualShock 4 or a DualSense controller, then you can use the trackpad as a mouse and even use it to enable gyro aim in games. Did you know that you can force resolutions on a per game basis? Find the game in your Steam library that you want to change. Hit the menu button on your controller and then go to properties. Now scroll down to force resolution. Change it to any value you want. Doing this will change the reported resolutions available to the game in its own settings menu. But this is great if you want games to render at arbitrary resolutions. That's gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, this is actually a compilation of shorts that I have going on over on my second channel, uh, Gardner Bryant Shorts. Check it out, there's a link below. Get subscribed and make sure you hit that like button to this channel and my other one. I'll see you in the next one.